I thought I'd like to go out with her, but I figured she wouldn't have anything to do with a guy like me. So I worked up this gimmick. After I fixed her car that night, I drove out to her house and I pretended I wanted to road test it a few more miles and I asked her to go with me. It was a way to break the ice. We got up to the highway and then we had that accident. You claimed that the blood stains in your clothing were the result of that accident. Yeah, a car pulled in front of us and I hit the brakes and she knocked her head on the dash. Was she badly hurt? She was bleeding pretty bad, so I went to look for a doctor. But then the car broke down. And when I got out, I found out the distributor cap had been eaten away. So I locked her in the car and I walked to find a phone. Did you reach anyone? No, because I walked about 10 minutes and then I got worried about her and I went back. But when I got there, she had left. So I went back to town. When I got there, it was too late to call, and the next morning, cops picked me up. Well, if you were, if you were only gone 10 minutes, it doesn't seem likely she'd have started walking or opened or unlocked the door to a stranger. No. You mean you believe my story? I don't disbelieve it. Thanks, Giles. Hey, well, wait a minute. I mean, what happens now? We'll continue our investigation. If anything develops in your favor, I'll be back. Sure. Hey, let me give you a point of logic, Inspector. Judy wouldn't have opened that door except to somebody she knew. And the only people she knew were blue bloods. So even if you and the whole FBI find the killer, you're not going to bring him to trial, because there's too much juice in that town. Too many people with connections at the top. It's going to be a lot easier for you to just let me lay here and rot. Why don't we see what happens, huh? <laughs> 